all over the world. You hear people shouting at one another, I'm right, or you're wrong, only to be told the same thing back by the ones they are addressing. And it's not just true of religious people, critics of religion do the same thing. It's a depressing picture of bigotry and discord. But there is a growing trend towards softening the clamor by saying, no, we're all right in our own way. Or, no, we're, we're all wrong, nobody's perfect. It's a good message to consider, and it has some good scriptural support. The idea of removing the beam from our own eye before we try to remove the speck from our brother's eye. The idea of asking God to forgive us the same way we forgive others. The idea of us being judged by the same standards that we use for judging others. They all dovetail in with this more tolerant, less judgmental approach towards all matters of morality. Nevertheless, there is a place, a very small place to be sure, but there is a place for us to be able to call a spade a spade and not feel guilty for doing so. There is a great need for more judgment in the world, as long as that judgment is fair. In fact, if you look up the word judgment in the Bible, you will find that it's almost always a good thing. God wants us to exercise good judgment, to be able to tell what is right and what is wrong, what is truth and what is deception. So the real problem in the world is just that we have not correctly discerned the truth. Pilate, when he was given the job of passing judgment on Jesus, sarcastically says, what is truth? There was real truth, ultimate truth, eternal truth, standing right in front of him, and he had the audacity to ask, what is truth? His stubborn refusal to acknowledge that truth when it started to cause inconvenience for him reflected the utter hopelessness of making tolerance your cornerstone. You see, tolerance is something for materials. A building can tolerate so much weight. An opening can tolerate so much width. Materials can tolerate so much heat. But what people need is patience. And patience does not stop us from recognizing sin when it rears its ugly head. We're not asked to tolerate sin, but we are asked to love the sinner, reminded of the fact that we too have fallen short of God's perfection. There's a difference. What the world needs today is more judgment. You see, what the church has left out of all its doctrines is the cornerstone of Jesus' teachings. And like any measuring tool, a cornerstone exists for the purpose of exposing error and bringing the bricks back in line with the truth. I remember shocking my friends at times when a situation arose where someone would say something like, but what we are doing or saying is exactly like what we are condemning in others. It might be, for example, even applied to what I am saying in this video. We have seen what an awful thing self-righteousness is in the world, and even in the anti-religious world, where everyone is saying, I'm right, I'm right, you're the one who's wrong. Do we really want to add to all that arguing? But I've shocked my friends by saying, yes, there are similarities, but there is one difference. And they would ask, what's that? And I would say, the one difference is that we're right and they're wrong. You see, just the fact that a million people say they are right when they are not right does not and should not frighten that one person in a million who has found the truth from acknowledging the truth when he finds it. And when we have found ultimate truth, then we have every right to proclaim it with confidence. Not arrogance, which is so easy for any of us to get sucked into, but with humble confidence. We are right. And it is the truth that the whole world needs to hear. Our Father, think of it, the loving Father heart of the Creator of all that exists, our Father sent His Son. Damn all your religious counterfeits, our Father sent His Son. That is the truth that stands out mountains above all the rest. We have discovered both the source and the purpose for our existence in this one who is called the Son of God. And people dare to damn us for that. To tell us that we're making too big a deal about what the Son of God has come to this planet to say. They literally call us devils. Yes, sure. We are saying that they're making too big a deal of what others are saying. And we dare to suggest that they are of the devil too. Just as they say about us. But there is one small difference. Do you know what it is? Yes, we're right and they're wrong. 
There's no reason for us to feel self-righteous or smug about it. But we do have a reason for shouting from the housetops that this one who is called the way to the Father, this one who is called the truth, this one who is the source of all life and who has promised us life in all its fullness, he is eternal, infallible rightness in all that he said and did. And those who trust in him will not be ashamed. Do you hear me, world? I'm not saying this because it sells. I'm not saying it to be popular. I'm not saying it to put you down or make myself look good. I'm saying it because Jesus is right. And you and I and all our gurus and rabbis and doctors of divinity are but done by comparison. He's right. And without him, we are all wrong. Now, people everywhere have dishonestly grabbed his name and made similar claims. But nowhere do I hear any of them teaching people to obey him. Just listen for yourself. Where is anyone telling you to obey the teachings of Jesus, the Son of God, sent to point the world to the truth? And why don't they tell you to obey him? Because they're wrong. Every last one of them. Wrong, wrong, wrong. They say, Lord, Lord, in every song that they sing, but they are still wrong because they are not teaching obedience to the everlasting Son of God. They refuse to even read his teachings, despite the amazing supernatural work of the Holy Spirit in giving us those teachings through several different writers, spread over several decades, with all of them saying virtually the same thing. Heaven and earth may pass away, but his teachings will never pass away. Embrace those teachings, and you too can say with us, I have found that for which my soul has hungered, for which my heart has thirsted. I have found His righteousness, not our righteousness, like all the others have done with their man-made doctrines, but His righteousness. Jesus has said that if we refuse to be bluffed into feeling embarrassed about what He taught, then He will not be ashamed of us when He returns. But what he promises for all the counterfeits is eternal judgment. Why? Because we're right and they're wrong. We have listened to and fully received this great messenger of God, his only begotten son. He is worth more than all the wealth in the world. He is worth suffering and dying for because he alone is right and he offers his righteousness to all who would receive him. Please take the time to listen to Jesus today. Open your Bible to the four Gospels and read them like you have never read them before, as God's message to you through His Son. Then write to us at the address on screen and share your thoughts. We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you.